G'day fellas and welcome to probably the most scuffed video I'm ever going to do. As you can see, I'm currently in Berlin. Uh, I'm in the hotel. I literally flew in today and of course they dropped a big bag, big bad patch right on the day that we arrived. So it means that we've got to go through and do this a little bit scuffed. Uh, so I hope I'm coming through clearly. Um, and uh, for anybody wondering why I'm in Berlin, N4C baby, I'm down on the ground. But let's take a look and see what we've got because I've heard it's an absolute ripper of a patch. So let's get into it. Uh, so for this patch, they're continuing to hone in on the tighter win rates across the range of possible Civ matchups and making changes to complement some of the updates introduced earlier in the month. All right, we'll, we'll, get, we'll come back to that if we need to. I'm sure we can work out these changes for ourselves. All right, so let's start it off. Uh, we've got the Wonder. So going from 3K up to 6K. This is obviously a team game um, thing. Uh, that's probably the big, the big issue. So you guys know in team games, it, the, the build order on most maps is wall up sling your teammate to a wonder and then you just delay uh it's, it's almost impossible if, if somebody is walled up and you know you're on even grounds to be actually able to take out a wonder in team games so it's good to see that they're addressing this make it a little bit more costly for people to get there i think that's a great way to get around it stonewall build time increase from eight seconds to 16 seconds additional adjustments made to delhi sultan specific stonewall build time see below uh so I'm assuming that that's going to be under Delhi. So can I just say, this is definitely a change in the right direction. The other thing I would like to see is that when units, when the wall goes down, units are able to shoot uh, over it. And then as soon as it gets tapped by a single villager, it's like there's a giant wall in front of them, even though there's just a little bit of a foundation. So my suggestion would be just make it so that units can actually shoot over walls until they are completed. That way you don't have things like, um, I'm not sure if you guys have seen Salami do it, but essentially you've got like a whole bunch of mangonels and he will just stonewall them in and then he'll just delete the walls and then move forward and then just keep stonewalling up and the enemy will bring in siege and he'll just go stonewall the enemy siege out and move up with the mangonels. It's absolutely stupid. So that needs to be, that needs to be changed. Uh, made improvements to a bug where elephant attack animation cooldowns could be bypassed, resulting in much higher damage. Wonderful. That is great. Fix the crash that could occur when observing the game at eight times speed. I never experienced that, despite observing a lot of games at that speed. Remove Boulder Bay, Confluence. Oh my god, awesome. Remove Boulder Bay, Confluence, and Black Forest from the 1v1 quick match pool. Please note that these maps uh, can still be selected for a custom game, uh, as well as for team-based quick matches. Okay. Um, Civ-specific changes. So uh, there's something I want to talk about um, in relation to this. So hopefully I remember. We're going to leave it for the end of the video, because obviously it's a bit scuffed here. Um, and I don't want to be doing long form stuff, but there's something that I want to talk about here because I genuinely think that we need to rework one aspect of this game, uh, but we'll deal with that at the end uh, because I'm probably going to get not necessarily a little bit ragey, but yeah, we'll, we'll work it. All right, Chinese. Fixed a bug where the nest of bees would stop firing once its initial target died. This was great. This was really good. You'd often see like four nest of bees all focusing down a single, you know, longbow. And then that longbow would be killed by a knight. And they'd just like, they'd all get off one shot each, sit there for six seconds, waiting to reload. Good change. Imperial official and tax changes. Uh, so I, I don't want to read the developer notes. I just want to see the changes. Tax cooldown on buildings increase from 15 seconds to 20 seconds. Okay. Fixed a bug that allowed Capital Town Center to receive taxes after being destroyed. Okay, that's an interesting bug. Imperial official. Supervised bonus increase from 150% back to 200%. Good. Thanks for everyone who called this out. And tax carry capacity increase from 20 to 40 gold. Okay, so basically they've gone... This is a pretty smart move. This buffs up Chinese early game pretty significantly. Hold on. Let's read the rest of the changes. Imperial Academy. Imperial Examinations technology bonus to tax carry capacity increase 40 to 80 gold. Wow, that is big. That is actually huge. Now a tax drop-off location for the Imperial official. Okay, okay. China getting some love. China getting some love. That's exciting. Um, so this is a great buff to the Chinese late game. For anybody who's played China, you guys would know. Uh, if you've got a mill with just eight farms around it, that bad boy, you're going to be stacking up taxes all game. But this actually solves that problem. Um, early game, I don't think 15 to 20 seconds is a big deal. Um... It could be a bit of an issue, uh, but I'm, I'm sure the build orders will be fine out. Most of it's going to be like 10 seconds delay there, but even then, it's not like you're going back-to-back -back on those first collections. So I think this is a wonderful change. Great change for China. Um, yeah, it was really, really good. Delhi Sultan. Um, Delhi Sultan Infantry Stonewall Gate build time increase from 30 seconds to 60 seconds. Starting would reduce from 250 to 200. Good changes. Delhi getting fucking nerfed, boys. That is exciting to see. Okay, that is really good. Exactly where Delhi needed them up to in the beginning of their game. 
so that's great. The stone wall gate build time, that's a little bit interesting, but it makes sense. Um, Sanctity bonus gold reduced from 100% to 50%. So they go from, instead of being 200 gold a tick, it'll be 150 gold a tick. Okay. Uh, overall, these changes, I mean, these are definitely changes in the right direction. You guys will know Delhi are obviously a stronger civilization, especially their, their starting uh, stages. But I, I suspect now that you're seeing the 200 wood come in, so that's going to be your uh, mill. It'll be your lumber camp, your mining camp, and it will be your house. And you probably have to look to do a mosque in transition. Alternatively, you could try and delay the mining camp, but that's going to be tough. This really stuffs up their opening because you used to see, was it the, um, the, the no lumber camp opening? You won't be able to see that anymore. Uh, actually, could you still see that? No, you, you can't see that because house, mill, and, and mining camp, that's already 150, so they need the, that extra 50. Yeah, really good change. And now, if we're going to see the same thing for Mongols, booyah, baby. Uh, so let's see what we've got for Mongols. Mongol wonder cost increased from 4,000 per resource to 8,000. Great change. Keeps it in line with the general changes. Uvu stone generation is no longer flat 105 a minute. It now automatically scales 80, 100, 120, 150 per minute by age. So you've buffed them. You, bu you literally buffed the Mongols again, dude. <laughs> okay. Now, to be fair, this is a buff, but at the same time, it's a nerf. You guys spot that. It's, it's scaling. 105 a minute flat was like this. Now it's going to be like, you know, a little bit more like that. So if, if we were to assume every Mongol player gets up to the feudal age by five minutes, then they've lost 25 uh, by five. So they've lost 125 resources. And then they've basically lost absolutely nothing for all that time they spent in feudal. And then once they get to castle age, they're going to be banging out units. I mean, it, it's a good change though, because it means their special ability is more relevant in the late game. So you're going to be able to use it on those upgrades. That's really good, but then it's not as relevant in the early game. I, I feel like it's probably still not as far as you'd want it to be. Uh, I would even advocate for a little bit closer um, to uh, to where, I mean, I wouldn't say like a 50 or 60 baseline. We'll have to see how it goes. But this is obviously, it's a change in the right direction. Um, I don't think this is going to be enough to knock them off top spot. Tower Rush Khan, still really strong. Uh, oh, Khan, damage of Khan. Castle Age Khan reduced from 12 to 8. This is really good. Uh, still a very, Khan's a support unit, so it shouldn't be doing damage. It should ideally just be hanging out. It should just be chilling with the boys, but it's not. It's just, it is not chilling with the boys. It is killing the villagers, and that's not cool. Uh, but that, that's a great change. Khan's not going to four shot. I think it four shots villagers. I mean, from my math here, it doesn't four shot villagers, but when you get the plus one upgrade at range, which most Mongols will do, then it goes to a four shot on villagers. Yam and Yam network movement speed, bonus time reduced from 20 to 10 seconds. So really interesting that they're going after these things that sort of make the civilization unique. And then just, I feel like all of this could just be solved by just cutting out more wood from their start. If you just delay them getting their Uvu, it, it does, it, or, it automatically does that. So if we say that they dropped their Uvu down at the beginning of the game, right? Zero, zero, zero. Uh, it, it's probably built by 30 seconds. It's ticking away. It's generating stone already. Like it, let's say it takes a minute. Uh, for you to catch up to that if you had if you if you didn't start the game with enough wood to drop down the uvu and you had to chop wood you know you could potentially see a two or three minute delay on that uvu which is subsequently going to make up for that and w while the scaling before was like 105 a flat line and now it's kind of like you've got this curve right at least that flat line would just be it would start a little bit later i don't know we'll, we'll see how it goes i still feel like they're going to be insanely strong in um in, in this patch as well. I still, so obviously this patch is going to be targeted for N4C. Um, for those of you unaware, N4C, $100,000 tournament. Uh, it'll be, uh, it, it's uh, being hosted in Berlin. There's a couple of cool guys going to that. Uh, Viper, the Muslim, Marine Lord, the Mister. You may have heard of a few of them. Uh, there's also going to be this Drongo fella. Um, but, <laughs> so th that's what this is for. I, I still think Mongols is going to be a top tier pick. I still think Delhi is going to be very good. And one of the things to note, there's no Holy Roman Empire but, uh, nerfs here, dude. The Holy Roman Empire are going to be a top pick. I'm telling you, dude. Holy Roman Empire, Delhi, Mongols. I think French and Abbasid almost on the same tier. Maybe English down a little bit of a tier. Um, yeah, this is interesting. But I think, it, like, obviously it's a good buff. Uh, it's a good patch. A, a patch in um, in the right direction. I, I'm, I'm happy with this. They, 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 there's no... Remember there was a couple patches that where they buffed shit up and we're just like, what are, what are you talking... Why are you buffing that for? It doesn't need buffs or why are you... Like the horseman nerve. We just had no clue. Uh, but it doesn't seem to be that way. Uh, so what's next? Abyssid Dynasty. The unique units of a civilization should stand out among its production roster. Correct. 
and be especially exciting to build. Correct. While camels can be useful in some situations, especially camel archers. We've seen the Mister. Uh, you guys would have seen the Mister versus Don Artie on, I want to say, Dry Arabia. Beautiful, beautiful opening there. Just absolutely awesome camel usage. Um, but let's have a look what they say. To help camels pop, we're making them less specialized at fighting a single class of units, which is what they were, and more useful across the board. The goal is not to make exclusively camel armies, but for it to be more effective, to mix a few into your composition. Also, every wing at the House of Wisdom should be a strategic vi viable choice in every age. We like the initial impact created by the economic winning in feudal age, but the other choices aren't there yet. We've adjusted the power level of techs, moved them to different tiers. Beautiful. That is a great change. That's exactly what we want to see. I don't even think, like, 90% of people who play this game don't even know what the uh, trade wing looks like. No one would have a clue, uh, except for Kenoki. Kenoki knows what it looks like. <laughs> Chinese. The Chinese dynasty system offers a unique and fun way to advance the civilization. There are some frustrating parts we'd like to adjust while increasing the overall relevancy of its various unlocks. The special units and buildings unlocked by the dynasty will always be built once they are unlocked. In addition, we've moved all the dynasty buildings up one age so they become available at the phase in the game where they are most needed. Wait. Okay, so the special ability that came with the Spirit Way, which was that you unlock all previously established dynasty's units, that's just been given to the Chinese Sith. Great change. In addition, we've moved all the dynasty buildings up one age, so they become available at the phase in the game when they are most needed. That doesn't make sense. Uh, that doesn't make sense, because for you to have that dynasty, you need to be in that age. So let's say you get a village, right? And then they give you... A vi the village, what, they're going to give it to you in the Dark Age? They're going to give you the granary in the Feudal Age? Are we going to get the Pagoda in the Castle Age? I mean, if, if we are, sign me up. Um, but then that you're just taking away the weakness of the Dynasty. What's the point in the Dynasty if you're going to do that? Um, I, don't know. I don't understand what they mean by that. Holy Roman Empire. Uh, we'd like civilizations to have multiple strategic paths to choose from throughout the course of a game. Currently, there's too much power in the late game landmarks for the Holy Roman Empire, leading to repetitive gameplay. Very true. We're creating more interesting decision-making among the landmark choices of the HRE and giving them stronger options for distinctive play in the early game. Beautiful. Uh, that's exactly what they need. Um, the, the, the most common change I've seen for the Holy Roman Empire to be uh, brought in, make it so that the... Um, make it so that the Regnant's Cathedral comes through, and instead of it having three slots, give it five slots, but make each of the, the relics that it's got, instead of it being a 300%, uh, or rather a 300 gold a minute trickle, make it a 200 gold a minute trickle. So instead you'd be going from like 1,100 gold to 1,000 gold, but you wouldn't have to build that monastery. So that would be it if you've got five relics. Uh, but I mean, th this is good. Like, that, oh God, uh, they're, they're on top of it. They know exactly what is going on uh, when it comes to, you know, what they should be doing. Now, the, the one thing I want to talk about, and this might be a bit long-winded, so I do apologize. I probably shouldn't be doing this um, when I don't have my... Sorry, guys. Uh, um, when I don't have... Hold on. Did I just dox myself? i got to check. Doesn't look like it. Um, when I don't have my, uh, my proper setup, okay, and that is water play. Now, you guys will know, okay, think about feudal age right now on land, okay? Let, let's talk about any civilization, early feudal age. What are the units that you've got there? I mean, you've got your horseman, your archer, and you've got your spearman. Okay, that's your core. Every single Civ's got that. Now, if you don't have the Archer, you've got the Longbowman. If you don't have the Horseman, well, no, I think every Civ's got the Horseman. But there's typically unique units are going to be complementing what is in there already. Now, there are variations that exist for some civilizations. Some get the Knight early, some get the Men at Arms early, uh, some can make the Chokunu. Okay, but where I'm coming at from this perspective is that currently water play, it's not fun because water is so cutthroat that if you lose it, it's very hard to win the game again. And with the current situation, losing or winning water is decided by your civilization. And that's not fun. I shouldn't have to go into a game and be like, oh, I'm playing as China. Oh, I'm up against the French. Well, I'm not even going to bother building a dock on this map because I know I'm going to lose it at six minutes anyway. So what's the point? That shouldn't be a thing. So... Am I saying that we should standardize ships or boats on the water? Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. Let's standardize boats on the water. And now one of the comments I saw, I think this was on Reddit. It might have been on Reddit or it might have been, I can't remember exactly where I saw it. 
uh, someone basically said, look, Drongo, you're not thinking like a developer. They've invested months, years into this game, and water play has been a big part of that. Um, and so it's really important that you consider the fact that, uh, that they have, you know, there's, there's a, lot of, uh, a lot of work gone into this. And I appreciate that, but at the same time, uh, you've also gone ahead and brought in all of these maps, right? Um, well, first and foremost, let, let's just get it out of the way. Uh, th this is the sunk cost fallacy, okay? You might have sunk $3 million into, into water play, you know, your balance testers and all, all of that. But at the end of the day, what does it even matter if people aren't going to enjoy playing water maps? Consistently, we see water maps being all f would every single time. It doesn't matter what it is, Mongolian Heights, Confluence, Boulder Bay, uh, Nagari, every single water map, alt f would I queued up for 13 games. When, just before I left to Berlin, I queued up 13 games and every single one of them was a water map and every single one got alt f would People do not want to play it. And the reason why is because of that, because it is stale, because it is so obviously uh, or easy to identify the cause of the issue there. It's the same reason why we see Rus on every single Boulder Bay, because you just win at the civilization pick screen. I shouldn't win based on my civilization when it comes to water. I should win based on my skills, my ability to utilize my civilization in a unique and a meaningful way that's you know, outside of the box and, and all of that sort of stuff. But at the same time, the uniqueness of my civilization should complement an already existing groundwork. And on the water, it does not, because everybody's got unique units. French, hulks, galleys for the English, galleys for the HRE. Uh, China get the, the junk, um, the Mongols get the junk, Delhi get the, what did the Delhi get? The Dao, uh, the Abbasid get the Dao, and then the Rus get the, uh, the, their lodger attack ship. I think all of these ships are beautiful ideas, but at the same time, let's make it so that every single civilization has the same ship in feudal age, and then spice things up in Castle Age. I don't care. Do what you want in Castle Age. Because then I've, at least I've got access to the Springles. I can try and defend my water a bit better. At the moment, I can't. So that, that's my sort of, my overall look at the way that um, that water currently sits. Personally, I, I'm really not a fan of it. And I, judging by how often people alt F4 water maps, I don't think they are either. So, you know, how about let's cut the crap. Let's have a serious think about water. And let's not think from the perspective of, oh, but we've already invested X million into it, so we can't change it now. Well, you don't change it now, you're just going to put everything else to waste. Because if, if people come to this game and they don't enjoy playing water, that's a serious aspect of this game that they're missing out on. Water's great. It's got a lot of beauty to it, especially in the late game. There's nothing like a bombard snipe that gets you going. But um, yeah, anyway, that's been my rant. Other than that, fellas, and 4 c it'll be going on uh, from, I want to say the 5th of March until the 13th of March. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm going to leave a link in the description to Nilly's page on Twitch. That's where you're going to be able to follow all the action. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm going to be over here. You guys are going to be getting a whole bunch of content coming your way pre-recorded. I think I pre-recorded like 40 videos. So they're all going to be popping up. But uh, this one's going to show up to you guys right now. But everything else is going to be past Drongo. So I'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching.